Hey guys, in this video we are going to talk about the method for completing the square. So completing the square can be a nice alternative to factoring. Let's say you have a question like this. You've got 2x squared plus 2x plus 9 equals 0. You want to factor it, so you do multiply these two. The product is 18 and the sum is 12. What two numbers multiply to 18 and add to 12? It's not so easy to think of. So you need an alternative method that's still going to get you information about the graph of the parabola, but doesn't make you try to figure out what kind of horrible decimal and irrational numbers multiply to 18 and add to 12. So the method to do that is called complete the square. Complete the square works whether the coefficient on x squared is 1, which would be something like that, where it's not even written, 2, 3, 4, it can be negative, a fraction, whatever. I chose one where the exponent on x squared is not 1 because it's a little more difficult. So, the first thing you need to do is make the exponent on x squared actually equal to 1. So we need to divide 2 from the x squared term. We also need to divide it by the 12x term. We could divide it by the plus 9 term, but I'm going to show you a different way to do that. So the first thing I would do before I do any of that dividing is I would take my 9 over to the other side. The reason I move 9 over is because it doesn't have an x associated with it like those two. So I'm going to divide out my 2x, or factor out, sorry not 2x, just 2. So when I take 2 out of x squared, I am left with x squared, plus when I take 2 out of 12x, I'm left with 6x equals negative 9. So what we're doing with completing the square is we're adding on something right here. Some number that will make x squared plus 6x plus this number a perfect square. So remember a perfect square would be something like x plus 1 times x plus 1, which you can write as x plus 1 squared. Something multiplied by itself. So, let me just erase all of that. So this is what we have so far. So we want to know x squared plus 6x plus what is going to make it a perfect square. Now we're adding on something to this side of the equation. We can't do that. It changes the equation unless we subtract out the same number. Now what's important to remember is that this number is really being multiplied by 2. If we were to factor in, use the distributive property with that 2, it would multiply the number that we're adding on here. So we need to subtract twice of the same thing because we're adding on twice of something. Now you can think about, do it in your head, if you're good at stuff like that, or there is a formula to help you figure out what goes in that blank and that blank. And it says that you take b over 2a and square it. It's really important that you pay attention to the sign on b, whether it be positive or negative. Now what these variables refer to is the coefficient on your x squared and your x term. a should always be equal to 1. That's why we bothered factoring out the 2 here in the first place so that a will be equal to 1. It always is. If your a isn't 1, something's gone wrong. b is the coefficient on x. So in this case, b is positive 6. Sign matters. So 6 divided by 2 would be 3, and positive 3 squared would be 9. So 9 goes in this blank, and 9 goes in this blank. So now we've got 2. I'm going to show you a little shortcut. You can factor this the regular way, you know, like a trinomial. I have videos on that if you're not sure how to do it. Or you can do the sneaky way, which is x plus, in this blank, you're going to take the same thing you had here, b over 2a, but just don't square it. 
sine of b matters. It was positive 6 over 2 times a is always 1. Positive 6 divided by 2 would be positive 3. So you can stick that in there to be really sneaky. And then just square it afterwards. Now we have a perfect square. x plus 3 squared. All we need to do is simplify the rest of the numbers we've got. So back up here I had negative 2 times 9 and that's going to be equal to negative 18 and then I had negative 9 on the other side. This is going to stay the same for now and I'm just going to add 18 to both sides so that they'll go away. Negative 9 plus 18 is going to end up being positive 9. So now I'll, all I think I'm going to do is divide the 2 out so that all I'm left with on the left hand side is x plus 3 squared and that equals 9 over 2. You could convert that to a decimal if you want. It would be 4.5. The advantage of completing the square is that unlike up here where I had x squared and x, now I only have one x in my entire equation. So to solve for x, by the way this is called standard form. If you're asked to leave something in standard form, leaving it like this is fine. But if you're asked to solve for x, which you should solve because then you can get information to graph and stuff like that, all we need to do is take the square root of both sides and we'll get x plus 3 equals positive the square root of 4.5 and x plus 3 equals negative the square root of 4.5. It's really important you have your plus and minus because that gives you your two solutions. A lot of parabolas have two places where it crosses the x-intercept. The reason we know it's plus and minus is because we took the square root of something squared. What if x plus 3 had been a negative number? When you square it, it ends up being a positive number. So this is really the absolute value of x plus 3. To solve absolute value equations, you take whatever you had inside the absolute value sign and you make it equal to positive whatever is on the other side of the equal sign, and also equal to negative, whatever is on the other side of the equal sign. But it's okay if you just want to think of it as plus and minus, whenever it was over there. Now, we don't really need the brackets anymore because it's all adding on this side. So if I solve for x from the first one, all I need to do is subtract 3 from both sides. And I'll get x equals the square root of 4.5 minus 3. And I get that's approximately equal to the decimal negative 0.9. So that tells me that maybe that was this intercept up here. When I solve this one, I'll subtract 3 from both sides. And I'll get x equals negative 4.5 minus 3. And I get that's about equal to negative 5.12. So my graph probably looks something like that with both like that with both solutions on the negative side. To figure out if these two solutions you found are right or not, you need to go back to the original equation. 2x squared plus 12x plus 9 equals 0 and then plug in one of your solutions. So I'll plug in at negative 0.9. These are equal to x. So wherever I see an x, I'll put in at negative 0.9. And I'll ask myself, does that still equal 0? 2 times negative 0.9 I get is about negative 1.8 plus 12 times 0 0.9 negative is about negative 10.8 plus 9 does that still equal 0. So 1.8 negative plus negative 10.8 plus 9 Oh, sorry, this was squared. That's why I was confused. 0.9 negative 
squared times 2, so that should have been 1.62. 1 1.62 minus 10.8. I get that these two simplify to be about negative 9.18, so if I add on 9, I get negative 0.18. That looks pretty close to being equal to 0 to me. It's just a couple issues with rounding error from the square root of 4.5. That's close enough. We'll do the same thing with our other solution. We'll go 2 times negative 5.12, and I'll remember to square it this time. Plus 12 times negative 5.12 plus 9. And does that still equal 0? 5.12 negative squared times 2, I get that's equal to about 52.4 plus 12 times 5.12 negative, I get that's equal to about 61.4 plus 9, does that equal 0? Plus 52.4 and I get that I negative 0 0.04 for this side. Negative 0 0.04 is also pretty close to zero, so I'm pretty happy with my solutions. They've satisfied my equation, so that's really all there is to do. You find your answer, you check it, and then you're done.